All right, so today I thought I'd give you an update on my reticulated python Lucy. She is a really big reticulated python. She lives over here in my basement on my pool table. She weighs about 90 pounds and is about 17 feet long. She's really big. And I've been kind of going through different substrates. I started with kind of like a coconut husk substrate and kind of switched back and forth between paper. I've heard some people use cardboard. And I finally kind of switched over to kind of a combination of a different things. I went over to a towel, like a bath towel and I actually did a video on it and some people were commenting saying you shouldn't put a towel in there because a reticulated python can end up eating that towel and needing surgery. So what I did to get around it is I took the towel and I took a hot glue gun and glued it to a piece of cardboard that I cut out for the enclosure and it fits just perfect. It's kind of crazy. And I tried it just a couple days ago and of course Lucy, the first thing she did is pee all over the towel and it got completely drenched. So of course I had to pull her out of there. It's, it's with a big snake like that, you definitely need two people. So when I pulled her out, I you know I had to have a helper move the snake in and out. That's one of the disadvantages of having a really big snake, especially if it's too much for you to handle. You have to get a second person, and that second person has to be available and have the time to help you move the snake. So it can be a little challenging, especially as kind of a you know a lone snake breeder down here in my basement. I don't have employees or anything like that, so I have to ask some of my family, which are not really into snakes to help me move some of these big reticulated pythons which is kind of an interesting experience for all of us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over and I want to show you Lucy in her new her enclosure with kind of this new hybrid substrate that I set up for Lucy. All right, so take a look at this reticulated python. This is Lucy. She's a really beautiful snake. She is a white albino reticulated python, 50% dwarf, believe it or not. And she is, she is about 90 pounds and about 17 feet long. She's a really awesome snake. And I just changed her, her towel down here. I changed it to purple. She was on a white towel. And I could just sit here and watch her all day. I'm gonna close this, because I definitely don't want her to come out. I had the glass open there for a minute. And I kind of went to this new substrate with a towel on a piece of cardboard, which has been working really good. I tried it for the first time this week, and of course, as soon as I put it in there, like two days later, she peed all over it, so I had to change it, and it worked pretty good. The only problem is, is when she pees on it, she kind of, the whole thing kind of gets wet from end to end, so you have to keep on top of it and keep changing it, but it's essentially like a free substrate. I just hot glued it right to this piece of cardboard and I get the cardboard from some of the pet food that I order online. So I have an unlimited amount of cardboard and then I just use a hot glue gun and hot glue it right to the cardboard. It's been working fantastic. The first towel I pulled off of the cardboard, it came off really easy. You can just kind of give it a little tug and it pulls right off with that hot glue gun. It's pretty awesome. And I could just sit here and watch her all day. She is a really beautiful snake. <laughs> she's kind of she's kind of looking around and saying, hey, how do I get out of here? At some point, I need to upgrade this enclosure. She's in a six foot enclosure, which definitely needs to be upgraded at some point. But right now I'm trying to dial in kind of her conditions and kind of the substrate I want for a larger enclosure. It'd almost be nice if you could have, you know, some kind of a larger enclosure with pre-made, like uh, some kind of pads or something that you could just pull up and replace place that would be ideal and I'm surprised no one's ever thought of it with a, a big snake like this with a reticulated python a lot of people use paper I've seen a lot of paper substrates and the problem with paper is it's not really absorbent and it gets pretty messy pretty fast and I've seen a lot of reticulated pythons on paper and essentially what they do is <laughs> they kind of you know go to the bathroom on the paper and then they crawl through the paper and then before you know it there's just you know a wad of paper in the corner and nothing really absorbing anything and the whole enclosure gets really filthy and really messy it seems like with the, the towel on a piece of cardboard it really you know holds its shape on the bottom which is pretty cool and I could just watch this girl all day long here just her interactions especially when you move her over into something new and she's just kind of crawling around <laughs> checking it out I'd say most of the most of the times a reticulated python will just kind of curl up in the corner and won't really do anything just kind of sit there sometimes she'll curl up and sit there for months and months and won't even move it's pretty amazing she won't eat doesn't seem like she doesn't even drink or anything she goes in these weird phases 
where she almost goes into like some kind of a hibernation mode or something. As a matter of fact, every month she goes into a shed and she, you know, she'll sit there for like a week or a week and a half, sometimes two weeks, going through your shed before she kind of snaps out of it and starts crawling around again. But she just sheds, so she is as good as it gets as far as looking really beautiful. And you can see a little bit of water on her head. She was just taking a drink from the water bowl, which is pretty awesome. And she is, believe it or not, she's only five years old, which is pretty incredible how fast she grew. When she was young, she grew lightning fast. I could not believe how fast a reticulated python could grow. I would feed her a rodent and she would just, you know, she'd have a big bump in her belly and then just, you know, within a matter of days, that bump would completely disappear and she'd be looking for another big rat. Pretty amazing growth. And now I feed her my, I pretty much just feed her my retired rats from my rat breeding operation that I use for my, for my ball pythons. And really, I need to upgrade to something bigger than rats, but so far, she's been doing really good on rats. And the cool thing about a reticulate python is their appetite is amazing. You feed them like one or two rats, and then they go ballistic, and they will just eat anything and as much as you can feed them. You can feed them like 10 in a row, which is pretty incredible, although you definitely don't want to overfeed them because it's not really good for snakes. Sometimes they can regurgitate if they feed too much, but she is a really stunning snake, especially when you get her kind of in that angle right there, and she kind of moves her whole body in kind of a slinky fashion. It is pretty awesome. And I could open the, the glass again. And I guess this video is just a show to show you how beautiful my reticulate python is. Look at how big she is. She is really a humongous snake. And it's a good thing, you know, she's 50% dwarf because the mainland reticulated pythons, they can get up to 300 pounds. I've seen some over 300 pounds. And this girl at 90 pounds, she's already getting to the point where I definitely need two people to hold her. You know, I can lift 90 pounds, but the problem is that she's so long and has so much leverage. It is pretty crazy. She is a really amazing snake. And it's, it's she's got, you know, she almost had the same exact pattern and the same exact contrast when she was a small hatchling. So I'd say as far as a snake really keeping the pattern and the, the contrast and everything, reticulated pythons are the way to go. They stay really super bright. As far as I know, I've never really seen a reticulated python fade out too much as it grows and matures. Really awesome snake. And this guy's just kind of looking around, checking out his <laughs> new environment. I definitely need to get a bigger enclosure at some point. But if, if you have a reticulated python and it starts pushing on the glass, like really pushing a lot, uh, you, you definitely know something's wrong. With a retic, you always know something is wrong with your enclosure because they will push and push and push and they will let you, you know, they're really, they'll really mess up their face if something's wrong. And a lot of things, you know, it could be that you, you don't have a clean environment in there. Sometimes if they go to the bathroom, they'll try to push out. Sometimes it can have too much humidity. I found if I have the humidity too high in there, she does not like it at all. And she starts really pushing. And the other thing is if the temperature is not perfect, I have, I uh, pretty much have a, a heat panel up on top over up here that is set at 78 degrees. It's kind of like an infrared heat panel that is snake safe. And then I have a little heat pad right, like right underneath a little hot spot that it's set at 88. So she can kind of come down here. On this end, this is kind of the cool end where the, the, the radiant heat pedal doesn't go all the way to the end over here. And she can kind of sit over here, but she's gotten to the point where yeah, she's she's almost like, a, almost like a zoo quality animal. She is so amazing. And the funny thing is, is now that I'm, I have this kind of like a carpet on the bottom here, uh, it's, it's, uh, it seems like I have to pick her up and move her a lot more. So she hasn't really been handled that much up until recently when I started changing this, uh, kind of like a beach towel, I guess it's like a bath towel on the bottom. You have to be really careful that, you know, you don't have any loose flaps, you know, like pretty much glued it and made it really tight on the cardboard so there's nothing she can really get right in her mouth. If, you know, if she eats a rat and then puts a corner of that in her mouth, you definitely don't want a snake eating your towel, which I've seen some tragic results on some YouTube videos. 
but she's just kind of chilling out in here. She seems like she really likes this enclosure, really no problems at all. And she's <laughs> she is definitely a handful and she can eat a lot too. As a matter of fact, if you actually bought a snake like this and started feeding them like a, like frozen rabbits or something like that, a lot of times uh, the rabbits can be really expensive, especially if you're buying online and you're buying frozen rabbits. It could be, you know, you know five dollars to ten dollars a rabbit which is well it's, i guess it's not too bad because you could feed them like you know one maybe one rabbit a month one or two which wouldn't be too bad but she is a really big second let's see if i can get her to move just a little bit <laughs> kind of stretch her out and wake her up a little bit yeah she's really awesome and if she was a little bit smaller, I'd probably take her out more and kind of play with her, but she is such a handful. It's like, I can't even really, really deal with her if I take her out. She is an incredible snake. All right, so there you have it. Welcome to the world of big snakes. <laughs> Let me tell you, when I'm putting a snake around my neck like Bobby here, this is a full-size adult ball python. Bobby is a male. He's about seven years old. And let me tell you, when you compare someone, something like Bobby to Lucy, there is a night and day difference between the two. Let me tell you, if you're getting into reticulated pythons, you definitely have to have a second person, maybe even a third person, if you buy a full mainland reticulated python. And kind of the challenging thing is when it was small, it looked pretty small and then I moved it up into several different enclosures really quickly as it grew you know it was within a matter of I'd say within a matter of a year and a half it was almost to the size that she's at now pretty incredible and I used her to dispose of most of the rats here in my collection when they would get really super old as a matter of fact I have so many old rats in my rack right now I need to retire a lot of them because if you don't you know feed them to your snakes a lot of times they'll just die of old age it's kind of interesting breeding rats because they don't really have a really long life and I'm almost to the point where I can have a couple more reticulated pythons with all the retired rats that I need to dispose of or maybe some boas or something like that. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.